So this is Ramesh Babu Pragnananda, otherwise known as Prague. Now he's 17 years old, a chess prodigy from India, and he's just played what's gonna go down, I reckon, as the greatest attack of the Chess World Cup 2023. It's undoubtedly the greatest so far. Will it be surpassed? I doubt it. Now he was playing today in round two of the FIDE World Cup, a World Cup event that takes place every two years. His opponent was the French uh, Frenchman Maxime Lagarde, not to be confused with Maxime Vachier Lagrave, MVL, the 2700 player. This guy is about 25.99, right? Very strong player in his own right, but what Prague unleashed on the board today will go down in history. So e4 on the board, and Prague goes with his favourite, King's Pawn Defence. We now get the two knights developing, and Bishop b5 pressures this one, which is defending the pawn. Now, knight g7 was played by Prague, and it's a rare move. It's known as the Cozio or Cozio defence. You know, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. Now, normally at top level chess, you see that knight coming to f6. So what does black have in mind? Well, after knight c3, the knight spins to g6, where it still defends the pawn, but also looks at some other ideas. Now, white seeks to punish this, as we're going to see. First off, d4 is played. White looks to explode the center, take advantage of the fact that black's moved that knight two times already. So knight takes on d4 played, white takes here, this is all theory, and now c6 kicks back this bishop and queen b6 played by Prague. So that's a powerful centralized queen, you know it's eyeballing down here, you can't develop the bishop until it moves, so it now nudges back, white wants to keep the queens on the board, that is the best move. We get bishop e7 and now the white player, Maxime Lagarde, he goes his own way, because the main way to go here is with castles, slowly prepare f4. But what does he do? Well, f4 all in one move, and he's just trying to punish the positioning of this knight. So he's taken away the e5 square, and now watch his follow-up moves. So we get castles from Prague, and now pawn h4. Threatening h5, he just wants to absolutely squash this knight, you know, force it back to a miserable square. Now, he is offering her pa uh, pawn here, uh, Maxime Lagarde. So if you take with the bishop, well then there's pawn g3, and it's not good for black. Because the bishop drops back, you're losing critical tempos, and now something like pawn b3 is a great move, preparing to bring that bishop to the long diagonal, castle, queenside, huge attack. And coming back here, if you take with the knight, well then there's queen g3. And there's similar problems, you know, after the knight backpedals, there's something like f5, the knight's getting squashed, huge attack, no good. So Prague doesn't touch the pawn, he plays pawn to d5. And if you remember nothing after this game but this, then remember that if you're getting attacked on the flank, look to counter in the centre. Very thematic idea. So white now carries on with the plan. Now it's actually the wrong move technically takes on d5 should be played first but this pawn was pushed on very logical playing with the plan but now Prague he flicks in this takes on e4 and it's actually a nasty move to me because if you play the really natural knight takes on e4 well now this knight h4 is a problem because this square has been freed up so the knight can retreat back, you know, the pawn is gone. And say you carry on with queen g3, which you'd like to do, look to attack, pressure the knight. Well, then there's queen b4 check. The knight is loose, it's got to drop back, knight f5, you know, huge position. Now, white doesn't have to play queen g3 here, there are other moves, but you know, king f1 is top here. Pretty miserable move, defending the pawn, not what you want. So taking with the knight, not ideal, and if you take with the queen, now there's bishop h4 check, but there's no pawn g3, the queen doesn't support it, again, really bad for white. So, the queen slid to g3, ignored this pawn, the knight's still under attack, where is the knight moving to? You know, these squares are taken, is it coming back here? Well, no. Prague just charges forward here by putting the knight on h4, even though it can be captured, 
and after the rook captures, he doesn't even take back that piece with the bishop because if you do, queen recaptures, well now when you flick in this check, which we see in the game, the bishop can block, and if you try and carry on the attack, well you just haven't got enough pieces. Knight e2 is coming, queen f2, the queen's going to get evicted or traded off, the attack fizzles out, white's doing great. So what does Prague do? Well, he checks immediately, leaving the rook on prees. Bishop f1 blocks, and now a stunning move, the star move of the game in my opinion, we see the pawn now kick on to e3. This is the image from the thumbnail. Now it's such an amazing move, because you're actually allowing white to save this rook if they want to do so. But the problem with this is bishop to c5, and it's just a crushing quiet move that Prague talked about after the game. Because if white now carries on with knight to e2 to evict this queen, well it can come to f2 with check, queen takes, pawn takes, this is the main line, and because you force the king to the d file, it gets cut to shreds. Now if you come to d1, it's terrible. Check, bishop blocks, and this one's a killer. You're winning back the material, and then some. It's minus 15 here, for reference. And coming back here, if instead you step to d2, we'll still check, king c3, and now this is the position that Prague talked about in an interview after the game. Should be decent for black, and he's absolutely correct. It's about uh, minus three, you know, three pawns up for black. The problem for white is all of these development issues plus the exposed king. So it makes up enough for the piece, and of course there's this amazing pawn on f2. So we didn't see the rook try and rescue itself, we saw knight d1, excellent defensive try, attacking this pawn, covering this square, and now a really calm move from Prague, continuing the pressure, rook to e8. So he's saying, I dare you to take this pawn, if you do, you're opening the e-file to my rook. Now the computer gives the best move here as well, you can play bishop f5, or you can even take this one now, queen takes, then you can even crash through here, you know, you've now decoyed that queen away. Um, I'd click through similar lines here, but not this exact one. But you get the idea, you know, queen's gone, now this piece is dropping, so you just can't open the e-file to that rook. So instead, we see king e2 played because there are also some ideas of pushing on that pawn, ripping open the e-file. So the king blockades, you know, the bishop couldn't do it, pinned by the queen. And now bishop e6, another calm killer move by Prague, still not taking the rook, because bishop c4 is a huge and lethal, uh, lethal threat. So what should white do? Well, f5 is actually best to open up the rook's defense, but, you know, we're human, not perfect, right? So Lagarde goes pawn b3 to cover that square, but the problem with this one is he opens this diagonal in a really nasty way. So Prague starts with rook a to the eight. I love how he brings all his forces into the attack. So, so instructive. Now the knight does capture, and this is the top move, but it's a brave move, right? You know, you're opening up both of these cannons, they're blasting down to your king, I say I misfired, so I'll misfire both, right? And now Prague, he starts to open them up. So he goes bishop f6, hitting this unprotected rook in the corner, we can see one of the problems of b3, the rook saves itself, and now this move is really stunning. So bishop f5, it uses the fact that the knight is pinned, attacks this pawn, and sets an amazing trap. I mean, I shouldn't say that this move is stunning, but the idea behind it, the bit that comes next. So best for white here is to apparently go rook b2 and cover the pawn, but then you're literally hanging a rook, you know, it's not good. Um, no, wait, sorry, you're not meant to take straight away, what does the computer say? Oh, take this rook first, okay, it gets quite complicated, right? So many lines, but black's really winning. But what Prague does here is set the trap, white falls for it by going queen to f2. So looking to trade off the queens, what could be more natural? You're fed up with that one, you wanna consolidate, use your extra material in the long run. But this is the move that white would have missed. Can you see the best move for Prague, the response that he played? <clears throat> So the move he played here was bishop takes on h4, finally eliminating that rook. 
Now, why is this so beautiful? Well, if white takes that black queen, then there's a checkmate in one move. Again, pause if you want to look for it. Maybe you found it on the previous move already. So the move you play here is bishop g4, that's check and mate. I mean, look at how these snipers just cut the king off, plus in combination with the rook, and this rook, because the knight is pinned, cannot take the bishop. I mean, that's one hell of a checkmate, right? But we didn't see it on the board. Of course, white sees this, so they take the bishop, but Prague said his opponent was shaking his head. You know, he'd missed this idea. And now after bishop takes on c2, the house of cards is really starting to crumble. So the rook attacked. And if you do something like this to save it, well, bishop d3 is a real killer move. King f3 played, then you pick up the bishop, and now black is even ahead material and still a raging attack. Won't keep going deeper, but it's really, really bad for white. So what we see instead is the queen taking on d8, and it's a nice try from white, because now after the rook recaptures, the knight is no longer pinned, so you can pick up this bishop on c2. You've got rook and minor piece for the queen, and when you do a material count here, you've got three minor pieces for the queen, and obviously the rooks match up against each other. <clears throat> so normally, three minor pieces for a queen would be quite favourable. The minor pieces win out. If they can find outposts, coordination, and the king can get relatively safe. But none of those things are true in this position, and so black is better. So Prague starts with queen c5, instantly attacking one of those loose pieces. The knight jumps to e3, rook e8, pins that knight, and Prague just not rushing things, right? Improving pieces, not snapping this pawn yet. So, so instructive. So king f3 was played, unpinning the knight. We now see queen d4, still not going for this pawn, you know, threatening queen e4 check, picking up the loose rook on b1. So the king steps back. We see a repetition, king f3, and now Prague takes the pawn. Pawn g4 played, queen h1 check, and there's just so many tactics in the air. You know, if you block here with the bishop, <clears throat> then there's a problem with that piece because now the rook can crash through here, and if king takes, the bishop drops, this is a winning end game. If the bishop takes, then the rook drops, again, it's a winning end game. So we didn't see bishop g2, we saw king g3. Prague now lifts this rook into the game. We see bishop d2 trying to complete development, and pawn h5. Such a standard kind of idea to get at the king. You know, you use the pawns, you throw the kitchen sink, try and get more checks and exposure for those heavy pieces. So white takes, you know, there were threats here or possibly just ripping things open. White takes on their own. The queen recaptures, rook e1 now played, rook g6 check, king f2, queen h4 check, the king steps up, another check, the king getting forced out into the open and now really instructive once again. So often beginner chess players will just give checks wherever they can, but sometimes these kind of moves are the most deadly and killer moves. Silent, cutting the king, creating threats, and here white crumbles. So the best move here apparently is bishop c3, closely followed by bishop b4, but some kind of dark squared bishop move, right? You know, it is attacked. But what white does is defend that bishop, and this leads to mate in three. So can you find how black, Pragnananda, finished the game here? We saw resignation on the next move, just a fitting finish. So the move he played was pawn f5 check, and it forced resignation. So if you take that pawn with the knight, well, this is the finish. Forces the king up the board, and then you've got this nice checkmate using the fact that the king is blocked off here. And if we come back one move or one or two moves, if instead of taking with the knight, you take with the king, well, then you give a different kind of runaround. Again, this pawn, you know, blocks the retreat. King e5, and this is the mate. So this is the final position. What an absolutely phenomenal game from Pragnananda. Do hit subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video, it really helps me out. And if you want to see another epic game of chess, check out the video on screen and I hope to see you again soon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks very much for watching.